How's it going? Welcome back to a very special video with the crazy majestic one for Savior. Yes, I mean, I I'm perfectly sane, but when you've played the same game over and over again for what feels like 10 years, you might also question what is the definition of Ubisoft. Definition of insanity is doing the exact same fucking thing over and over again. Expected shit to change. That is crazy. I think it's money. Money. Welcome back, my wonderful wise ones. And if you're not a wise one, well, what are you doing? Have you been donked in the head, okay? Go down below and subscribe. It only takes you two seconds of your time to do that. But in all seriousness, thank you so much if you do consider subscribing and joining this wise one community. If you love gaming analysis, gaming reviews, and philosophical content, you are in the right place. I cover all of that in my videos. So please do join us. Um, because I'm just so, so passionate about this community, making content for you guys, interacting with you. Um, so don't be like the 99% of dum-dums. Let's break down tribalism, analyze some high quality games or not so high quality. So the reason why I wanted to do a Star Wars Outlaws review, okay? And I've been wanting to do this for a long time. I've had quite an interest in Star Wars Outlaws, in fact, for a very long time. I know when it first released, a lot of people weren't interested in it whatsoever. They just completely blew it off because it's a Ubisoft game. I'm glad that people are finally woken up to the fact that Ubisoft and the corporate overlords at Ubisoft are pretty much like the Nazgul. They only seek one thing. And yes, that's your wallet. <laughs> Money. Money. It seems like for a long time Ubisoft had their massive die-hard fans and it was actually pretty much um, the gaming community in general that had their backs. Uh, because they did make some good games in the past. I love their previous games like Beyond Good and Evil, for Far Cry 3 and Far Cry 2. That was great before it literally became the same game over and over again, Assassin's Creed. They started off with good intentions, but as they got bigger and bigger and the greed and they saw the, you know, projections for what gaming is going to be in the future, they just went down the dark side, basically. And I'm glad that people have finally woken up to the fact that Ubisoft are basically just not in it for making quality games, new experiences, asking different ideas, challenging the player. It's about basically giving you a very generic roller coaster ride. Ubisoft games are basically big spectacles at this point. You know what to expect and they're all pretty much the same. They're basically the junk food of gaming. And personally, I don't really like junk food, okay? I like something that makes me think, that makes me question. Playing with new interesting mechanics or engaging combat, all of this kind of stuff, different player agency choices, that's what I love. But Ubisoft pretty much doesn't really have any of them. And I think what broke the camel's back was um, the new Assassin's Creed, okay? I think that has got massive backlash. And when you compare it to a game that came out a couple of years ago, Ghost of Tsushima is just 10 times better, so. Name a game you're proud to have. 100% completed. Hey Ubisoft, why don't you name a game you have completed at 100% before releasing it? I just wanted to talk about that, give you an overview of Ubisoft as it is right now, because I think it's important to understand that going into Star Wars Outlaws, because on paper, this is not a terrible, terrible game. I would say that this is an okay game. It's a mid game and it does do some things I don't like and it does do some things that I do like, but I certainly wouldn't pay full price for this experience. It's basically a watered down version of the Star Wars Jedi Survivor or Jedi Fallen Order, that series, which I did, which I think did Star Wars much, much better because you can tell the people working on that game actually care much more about the source material. And to some degree, you can feel a bit of Star Wars love in this. Star Wars itself has basically just been completely milked for years now. Let me drink some of this milk. <laughs> oh. Ugh, yeah, I love milk. It's pretty difficult to find any joy in any new type of Star Wars IP, and the last time I felt that, like I said, was with Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Now, Ubisoft probably won't like me for making this video that much, and I'm doing this, you know, 
as a risk, basically, because people who are covering Star Wars Outlaws, other YouTubers, bigger channels, smaller channels, a lot of them have been basically greased. It's quite obvious that a lot of other YouTubers have basically been paid to promote Star Wars Outlaws, saying that yes, it's actually not a bad game, even though it's pretty much the same game we've played a thousand times before, and that is kind of the problem right now with just reviews, journalists, game journalists especially, um, because reviews at the end of the day are simply opinions. So that's why I wanted to give you this unbiased early look at Star Wars Outlaws review and give you this one early based on what has been played. So basically what Star Wars Outlaws is all about is this time around you are exploring the underworld, okay? You're not going to be um, a Jedi making, you know, a big grand adventure. This time it's kind of more small scale and you're getting to see and live the life of Star Wars, you know, live that slice of life adventure where you get to go on different planets and you're basically this kind of little troublemaker, an outlaw. And first of all, let me just say this, okay? It completely fails at that fantasy, first of all, and that is a major critique with Star Wars Outlaws. This should be a gritty adventure, but Star Wars has become so PC and tame over the years. When you look back at the original four, five, and six movies, they had a little bit of grit to them. Yes, they're family friendly, but they still had a little bit of grit, especially, you know, um, the earlier prequels to a degree. Um, this pretty much has none of that, okay? It doesn't really have any edge to it whatsoever. And as an outlaw, you can't really be a proper criminal. You can't hijack vehicles, you can't kill creatures out in the open world, and you can't hurt any NPCs outside of the bad guys, generic bad guys. So it kind of fails at that fantasy. If you think that you're gonna have a cool moral choice system like in Red Dead Redemption 2 or something like that, yeah, no. The reason why I was so interested in Star Wars Outlaws to begin with is because it looks like they have a little bit of choice and I'm a sucker for choices in games, especially factions. I'm a diehard Fallout New Vegas fan, I'm a diehard, you know, Obsidian RPG fan and just RPGs in general. I like choice, especially morality stuff, and I'm going to be talking about that in another video. But does this actually matter? Well, to a degree it does, but also it doesn't, okay? Because basically, there are systems in this game that basically, if you grind long enough, you can negate any of the effects of choosing one faction over the other. And it's basically, they didn't want anyone feeling left out because Ubisoft, it's all about inclusivity. And everyone has to be on the same page. And that's why you can't be naughty naughty, even though you're a goddamn wanted criminal by the Galactic Empire. No, of course you can't. You, ha you always have to be the good person in Star Wars. I don't know why, it's very stupid. This game would have been so, so much better if it allowed you to create your own character. It's saying that it, this is the first proper Star Wars open world game, which again is bullshit, okay? And a lot of people are annoyed at that. Don't advertise something that is false, okay? It's just, it's just, it makes you look so stupid, okay? This is not the first open world Star Wars game. This is very similar to the setup with like I said, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, that does it much better. Yes, it is a bit more expanded and the main open world elements, these hub open worlds are bigger, but it is still pretty much the same format now just with a lot of Ubisoft bloat in between the main objectives, okay? So now, after being donked on the head by big old Ubisoft, I'm going to get into the positives and negatives. I've done my extensive research of batshit insanity um, after the four hours gameplay and everything. If anyone is stupid enough to pre-order this game, um, then, you know, this is what I'm trying to deter, because we shouldn't pre-order games anymore, especially, um, no matter who it is, but especially from Ubisoft. And another thing people are upset about with Star Wars Outlaws, and me personally, another gripe, and, you know, you don't want to piss off the people going into your game. Ubisoft have managed to do that already, because basically, they already have DLC ready at launch, okay? But they're not including it, they're expecting people to pay for it, even though it's a finished product and it should be included in the base game in my opinion. So now let's get into the positives and negatives of this Star Wars Outlaws review. I think it is a fair balance of positives and negatives but honestly like I said you will enjoy this if you're like me and you are a Star Wars fan still and you want to feel the kind of older Star Wars atmosphere especially exploring these worlds that's really cool and stuff 
but as a game, it's not that good. If it didn't have the Star Wars license, this would be just another Ubisoft, you know, shit can. And also, I do have to say, please, please do consider supporting the show. Do consider dropping a small donation, a YouTube thanks, or a PayPal donation. I hate to ask, but I am trying to do this full time at the moment. And realistically, I can actually only do this with your support. Um, I've only had a few supporters, but they mean so much to me. So please do consider becoming one or joining as a member as I have a whole playlist of extra content for you. And you should check out my music on Spotify because I actually make pretty banger music, surprisingly. I know looking at me, you would not think that, but if you like the cyberpunk music, I actually make pretty good music. So let's get into the first positive, my wise ones, and that is the world settings, okay? So each planet has a main hub area, a main city or outpost, whatever you want to call it, okay? And in these areas, that's when it feels the most Star Wars. And basically, surprisingly, it takes a lot of inspiration from Starfield. And I know that's a big shock and that isn't something you want to hear, but one thing that Starfield did that I did actually like to a degree is when you're exploring these cities, these open areas that are densely packed with NPCs, you just hear them chatter and talk about their daily life. And this way you pick up information on, you know, an interesting point to go explore or new quest. Just hearing NPCs go about their day-to-day -day life, it's very cool and immersive. And just the setting in general in Star Wars Outlaws, I'm a sucker for the old Star Wars aesthetic. I still really love it, especially in the glory days of the Empire. I just like to pretend the First Order never existed. But I do like the, the detailed approach they took to the cities, okay? You know, they feel lived in. You can go to the bars and gamble away your savings. You can interact with just random NPCs that have these kind of random events take place and then you can actually choose to intervene or not to help someone out of a sticky situation or to basically find ways to make more credits and stuff like that so it's pretty cool and i just like how lived in it actually feels especially the factions okay that's very cool like there are faction areas within each main city and depending on if you're you know respected in that faction you can enter it no problem or you have to sneak in and then they will just throw you out if you are caught stuff like that makes it feel very immersive and i really do like that um and just how detailed everything actually is it's very graphically impressive i would say now on to the next negative and that is the open world itself outside of these cities it's pretty boring. The outer environments just aren't all that interesting and you can't really interact with anything outside of the main cities. Um, only the random events that take place or, you know, points of interest, stuff like that. Um, and it just feels kind of bland and empty like most Ubisoft games actually do. Um, and of course you can clear out outposts and camps and stuff like that. But honestly, why would you want to, especially when the loot system is pretty atrocious? The only progression I think is going to be interesting is the actual upgrades themselves, in which you actually have to complete quests to gain an upgrade. Apart from that, it feels all very generic and very sparse in between. Basically, the open world design philosophy is everything that I hate within open world games, okay? When I think of good quality open world games, I think of something like Red Dead Redemption 2 or to a degree Skyrim even though that's aged quite a lot at the moment or something like Zelda Breath of the Wild, Elden Ring, something like that okay a good open world game needs to make the needs to make the player curious and you need to see something off in the distance go to that something that stands out in the map layout and design and then actually have an answer to that question, what the hell is going on, there needs to be some kind of dynamic quest there, there needs to be interesting loot to find, there needs to be a mystery to be solved, okay? Red Dead Redemption 2 does this very organically with having random events constantly take place or treasures to find. Most importantly, interesting AI that randomly interacts and, you know, changes based on what you're doing in the outside world, consequences to being out there as well. This doesn't really have much of that. Yes, there is a wanted system, which I'll talk about, but it's not what you think it's gonna be. And basically, when you are out in the open world, nothing truly happens that feels organic and there's no good exploration, only within the quests themselves. 
It's all very checklist, it's all very mobile game design. The next is a negative and a positive to a degree, it depends on the player, okay? And that is the story and the characters. Now I can't speak on this completely because obviously I haven't had enough time with the main character to know if, you know, she grows as a person or gets more interesting. But from what I've seen so far, she is a generic, wannabe, goody two-shoes, bad person. Which makes zero fucking sense, okay? Can we stop having squeaky clean characters in our, you know, mature games, okay? I know this is not completely M-rated, I think. But still, can we have a little bit of grit, a little bit of character development or growth? I'm tired of these big open world games with generic storylines with nothing to say for themselves and they just play it safe. No moral questions, no interesting dilemmas within the character, seeing them progress and grow on the path of self-actualization, nothing like that. She seems like a generic Star Wars copy and pasted Han Solo, but she has tits, pretty much. That's all that I've seen so far. Hopefully she gets more interesting later on, but as far as I've seen, nothing stands out. And it's pretty stupid that you're a criminal, but you have to be squeaky clean at the same time and you have to have a little fluffy buddy always on your shoulder. It makes sense with a character like Cal Kestis, it doesn't make much sense when you're playing as a goddamn outlaw. That's why I said it would have been much better if they added better choices and implications like they're doing with the faction, but you create your own character. Um, the voice protagonist so far doesn't feel like it's worth the, you know, payoff. So the next positive is the random events, okay? So basically you can get to stress calls and you can get this out in space as well, which is quite cool, but the outer space elements are basically arcadey shoot 'em ups okay? No proper space travel, think of something like Starfield, so it's quite disappointing. Uh, the transition effects onto the planet into space is much better, it's not just a loading screen completely, it's more of a cinematic, uh, so it's a little bit better, but honestly, it's the same kind of deal. Um, you get empire raids on planets, which is pretty cool, and when you're organically exploring places, um, you know, like caves or something like that, then you can stumble upon something interesting and have these random events take place. Like I was saying, what makes a good open world game is the open world itself and, you know, how much stuff there is to see. Not just the checklist, okay, there's a point here, there's a point here, there's a point here, you know, to keep up your retention like it's a goddamn Mr. Beast video, but actually engaging thought-provoking stuff where you have to figure out something yourself, where it's not just told to you directly what to do, it doesn't really have much of that whatsoever, and it doesn't help that the AI is completely brain dead, and if you just stand in the middle of the road, they just try and run over you. It reminds me of a goddamn PS2 game. Now, the next negative, let's talk about the combat in Star Wars Outlaws, okay? Combat in this game, sadly, is nothing exciting, okay? It's basically the generic third-person shooter, but this time all you have is a pistol. Yes, it could be upgraded, think of control, but without any of the cool, unique abilities that actually make that game interesting, okay? Because Ubisoft, creativity. The force of corporate power says it cannot. So yeah, it's not that great. You are a whammon, which is fine. I like me some cool whammon in storytelling. But what I do find a little bit ridiculous is how you give everyone little love taps and they're just in full body armor. But you know, it's Star Wars. <laughs> but it does remind me of like the Mandalorian and just of the Obi-Wan show, whatever the hell Disney puts out now. It'll just complete bullshit, mind numbing garbage. But yes, it is the same with that. You can sneak up behind anyone. The AI is brain dead as hell. Um, so you can literally just walk up right behind them and they don't really care. And the shooting is very basic. You can do some cool takedowns with your little furry friend, which is pretty cool. I don't know why every squeaky clean Star Wars game has to have a furry companion now. Or most games, okay, you know, like this type of game, need some kind of little side character to go on an adventure with. I personally find them pretty annoying, um, <laughs> but maybe I'm a bitter old man. <laughs> But yeah, it's not that engaging and I'm worried that it's going to stay the same and the upgrades aren't going to change the gameplay much because it does feel very one note. What I do think is cool, I guess, is that your little Nyx companion, whatever the hell is called, can go and fetch weapons for you, can distract enemies, play dead and stuff like that, which is pretty funny and cute. Um, and then you can pick up a more heavy weapon and it always means you are playing on the defensive, which is cool. But it just is not the most engaging, honestly. 
So there are plenty of Ubisoft fillers like races to engage with, pirate raids, arrests that you can intervene with, and I do like the fact that this is a positive, that you can actually change some things depending on what faction you're aligned with. You can actually use your influence within that faction to sometimes change the you know, course of what's going to happen with a certain NPC uh, depending if the Empire is kind of afraid of this faction or not. And you can bribe, use your credits and stuff like that. That makes it feel much more immersive. And when you're just exploring the world and just taking in the atmosphere, it can feel immersive. But you have to really ignore all of the bloat like with any Ubisoft game if you want to enjoy it. Um, and honestly then, why is this an open world game? It does make you feel immersed when you are in these main environments because you can play card games like Sabuck and actually cheat on it as well, which is very cool using your companion, which I like a lot. Um, and basically you can do, you know, quite a few interactions like betting on horse races, alien horses with their big alien slongs, and you can even um, play arcade games. You can play games within a game. Maybe you can find a game that's slightly better than this one. It might seem that I'm being a little bit harsh on Star Wars Outlaws. That's because this has so much potential. A proper fully fleshed out open world Star Wars game would have been cool with your own custom character with a unique storyline that you can carve out yourself. Not this kind of half-baked outlaw adventure where you play as another generic goody two-shoes person where everything is basically on rails and there's no player agency, no reason to actually explore, no interesting loot, the wanted system being a cool concept but not actually working properly. And that is another positive because I still do like that idea, especially with the Empire. Having a wanted system is pretty cool and many things can trigger it, just random events that take place in the open world. Like I said, if you stumble upon a farmstead that's being arrested or something like that or within the town itself and you decide to intervene or you're your choice doesn't go well, then you can be wanted. And it is a cool system because you really do have to avoid them kind of GTA style and they do have um, increased ranks of hostility within the Empire Wanted system, which is a cool idea. Sometimes you actually have to, like I said, go off world, but you know, the execution could have been a lot better. So let's end on some positives. What I really do like about Star Wars Outlaws is the factions, okay? The factions are very cool, um, even though they're not the most fought out. But basically, from what I've seen, they're not that interesting. Um, they're just kind of different flavors of each other. And like I said, there are these dynamic quests that you can go on to basically just get your reputation up with any of them. But this idea is cool, you know, choosing a job for one faction to get certain unlocks. I do like that you can double cross and like I said, that, you know, each gang has their own turf and territory. That is a pretty cool system. And the final positive is the upgrade missions. I really like this idea of doing a quest for an actual upgrade, not just, you know, putting down a skill point in a, you know, skill tree. This is much more fun and tactile way of upgrading your ship or your blaster, stuff like that which is cool, um, but the final negative for me is the fact that basically this just feels in an open world game like it lacks agency, that it lacks player freedom, and the character that you play as is always kind of, you know, just not taking anything seriously, and that's understandable, it's Star Wars, it shouldn't always be like a serious thing, but they could have gone for a much cooler approach, like that cancelled Star Wars game all those years ago, really going focusing on the underbelly of the Star Wars universe, but this just feels like a generic romp through some pretty set pieces, and the padding in between it is the generic open world Ubisoft stuff that we've all seen before, but of course it's trying to market itself that it's doing a lot different, but do bear in mind that these are the people behind the division, a multiplayer game, not a single player game, and that's all I really have to say about Star Wars Outlaws. I do hope you enjoyed this Star Wars Outlaws review and let me know what you think. Are you going to try this out or not? I just wanted to talk about it because it's been on my mind for quite a while. Ubisoft has the potential to come back, but I don't know if they will. We'll just have to wait and see. Thank you so much for watching my video. Please have yourselves an awesome day. Give this video a like if you did enjoy it and subscribe if you are new. It means a lot to me and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day. Look after yourselves. Peace out.